The Elestral's base set features a ton of cards that you can use to construct and build epic decks. And today we're going to be looking at a hidden gem card that is Scavagem. Let's dive in. Oh, and be sure to leave a like and a comment down below about what kind of deck you want to see next. Scavagem right now is what I consider to be a pretty overlooked card in the current state of the metagame. It's a 4-6 two-drop earth, so a decent defensive body, but otherwise relatively underwhelming. However, when it becomes casted through an ascension, when you ascend something on the field into Scavagem, you can expend an earth to search your deck for two earth-related cards that are either one cost or two cost. And basically, this turns itself into what looks like probably one of the most powerful toolbox cards in Elestrals, basically searching out almost anything you can need at a given time, and not just that, but two cards that you could use. So, in this particular deck, I'm running a handful of different things that allow me to search out really powerful assets for me. Those primarily being things like Demeter, which is a one cost, Sight the Demeter, a two cost artifact, Earthquake, a two cost invoke rune, Foloi Forest, a one cost stadium, and then you've got a couple other pieces like Equilinks and Viscerous, which can go on an offensive, and those are the cards that you would often search out with Scavagem as well. So, very quickly breaking down the deck, we are actually running Mono Earth. Uh, this is the first deck I've actually built in Elestrals that only features one element. I think that there is some benefit to that in the sense that it takes away some of the thinking process, which also reduces the risk for making a mistake in terms of spirit management, but it also reduces your diversity in your deck, right? So that's something to note, but I think Earth is probably the element that can handle Monotype on its own the best. So we've got three Scavagem to search out those different tools. Spy Nymph at three right now. Uh, I made some tweaks to this deck, but this is kind of my most recent build. Uh, three sp uh, Spy Nymph, which are going to basically serve as a five defensive wall and a very, very annoying Elestral to remove because of its effect, becoming an artifact and thus, uh, you know, reducing the attack stat of an opposing Elestral. You've got Equilinks, which provides really good rune control through Nexus. And Viscerous is the offensive juggernaut in Earth, being able to swarm to the field. Got a couple Tectoras, uh, which can scale really nicely with Demeter. Rumagem can search out any of your Earth Elestrals. And then you've got Sprouter, a defensive wall at five defense that can search out your artifacts. And then you've got the Earthquake, right? In terms of your runes. Earthquake gonna provide really, really reliable uh, uh, invoke rune removal or Elestral removal as an invoke rune. Uh, Demeter is your divine rune, which gives buffs to your Elestrals, but primarily is used as a Nexus bank. Then you've got a lot of Poison Tipped Arrows, Gorgon's Gaze, Shield of Achilles, Altar of Stars, a lot of counter support. Uh, I'm running eight counter runes in this deck. I've got a little bit of draw power, Nectar of the Gods. I've got Scythe the Demeter, which pairs nicely with Demeter to get some recovery. And then we've got Ambrosia just for a little bit of recovery. And two Foley Forest, which I really like in this deck because it turns Scavagem from a 4-6 to a 6-8 which all of a sudden becomes a lot more viable, and it also makes your Spy Nymph and your Sprouter 6 defense, which can be really difficult. Like I said, I, I don't think uh, you can overstate enough just how difficult those Illustrals are to take out when your opponent doesn't have the right answers, and it feel, it's such a feels bad, man, when you're like earthquaking a Spy Nymph or, you know, wasting a Boom Bat to get rid of a Sprouter or whatever. So uh, if this deck can put on enough pressure early, it ends up being really powerful. So let's jump into the gameplay. So I know it seems like I face off against Wurtz like every single match, and it's because I play Wurtz a lot, but uh, Wurtz is also a very competent player. So generally when I play against him, it's a pretty close game, right? Because he's, he's a, one of the kind of better players in our alpha testing server right now. Um, so when I when I play against Wurtz and, and, and we do well, it's, uh, it's always a good time. So uh, he's going to lead this game off. He's going to kick off with his Jolt in and obviously it's going to allow him to search for his Mount Olympus and he's going to shuffle his deck and of course he can set up his stadium so Jolton into Olympus gives him a five attacker right out the gate and of course I'm in a position where I'm like all right well now I got to figure out how I deal with this because you know that that's a pretty hefty body right away I get my scavenge on the first hand and I'm like okay that's kind of cool and I can play my spine infant the defense and I'm like okay that's also really cool and I'm just going to set my rune row right I've got my poison to Terra I've got my shield of Achilles both of which are very crucial in this situation. I'm even going to set my Altar of Stars just to give me a little bit of extra, you know, protection and also kind of make Wurtz think a little bit more about the decisions he makes, understanding that I have a pretty significant counter rune row in place. He's immediately going to go spark it, and I'm like, okay, that's not what I want to see. Spark it's really annoying. I don't want to lose my Scavagem. And he actually just ends there. He decides not to do anything. I was, like, all ready to poison tip Darrow, and I decided, you know, let's... Let's hold off on the arrow, and you know what? If I lose something in my hand, it's all good. And he just ends, and I'm like, okay, so that's fine with me. That allows me to get my Scavagem out, and I get to search two cards in my deck that benefit with Scavagem. Uh, I will tell you I forgot to expend here. It doesn't matter in the context of the game, but I did need to 
expend one here to do this effect. Uh, but I grab Earthquake and Demeter, which feels amazing. <laughs> and I immediately cast Earthquake and take out the Spark It, because to me, that is like the biggest threat. I really don't want him picking off my hand if I can avoid it. Um, and he didn't want to risk losing any of his spirits on field anyway. So again, it all works out. I'll clear that Spark It off the field pretty nicely. But he's actually going to just alter stars as like a way to counter it. So he can funnel some of these spirits around on his field, force me into attack position, and actually save that spirit on his field. It's kind of a unique play. Um, and it puts me in a position where like he can offensively threaten the Scavenge Him on the next turn. So I luckily have the back row, like the back row right now. So I'm not like super scared of it. But at the same time, it's something that we need to keep in mind of. And I'm, I just say, you know what? Let's just play my Demeter now because I do have the altar. And I want to make sure that I can use that if, if I need to, right? Like, that's a really good resource for us to use. And, you know, putting Demeter on the field. Listen, at this stage of the game, if he wants to waste some sort of rune destruction on it, it's really not the end of the world for me. I know I have two more in my deck. I know I can search it out later. And he's just going to go straight up Aeolus here, which gives him the opportunity to search out some Windelestrals. And I'm like, uh-oh. Is, what, what is he running right now? Is this like Voltempest? Like, what kind of deck is he running? He's got the Mount Olympus. He showed me Spark It. He's got Thunder. He's got Wind. And he's going to go and search. And he's going to grab P Gust. And I'm like, uh oh. Okay, so this might be some sort of Voltempest type deck or something like that. Um, or just maybe like Aggro, Thunder, Wind. And he goes P Gust. And he's going to pop my Shield of Achilles. And I'm like, oh, I really did not want to lose my Shield of Achilles at this stage of the game. And then he circles the sky, and he is just buffing up, moving things around, getting some draw power. Obviously, he doesn't have a hand at this stage, so he circles one off his Jolton, which I found interesting because he could have actually been even stronger, but he feels, okay, I don't need it. And then this Demeter play that I made on the last turn turns into a really smart decision because it gives me the flexibility of going for Alter to then move a spirit from Demeter onto Scavagem and actually just change my, I could either change my own Scavagem or change his Jolton, either way. I chose to actually change the Jolton. Um, so that way it wasn't an offensive threat anymore. And it ends up, like I said, being a really good call. Um, now I'm in a situation where I feel really good about where I'm at, right? I can play Nectar of the Gods here. I get to draw two cards. I've got my equal links in hand, so I feel really good about that. And I'm gonna draw into a Viscerous and a second Demeter. And I'm like, okay. We're in a pretty good position right now, but I need to start clearing some of these runes off the field. So we're going to cast down Equal Links here, and I'm going to start to threaten him with the potential of dropping some of his runes. So we're going to Nexus from the Scavage Gem onto the Equal Links and preserve our Demeter. And I'm going to ping that spot in the back. And it's, it's just good justice that he takes my shield. So I'll take his back, and then I actually get to run over his Pegas and his Jolton. So I go Scavage Gem first into the Pikas. I know that gives me one damage of, of uh, you know, one hit of damage. He doesn't respond to it. And then uh, he takes the one hit. And then I just ping the Jolton and we'll knock that out as well with the equal links. And I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm like, okay, that that's not a bad position to be in. Like he still has another Aeolus pull and um, you know, he still has Olympus and then he goes spark it. I'm like, uh oh, okay, let's, let's just play this smart. I'm just going to throw down my PTA now. So we didn't use it the last time. Instead, I used the, you know, the Earthquake to remove it. So he says, okay, I'm just going to... This is a cool strategy you can use with Spark It. He just nexuses this from the Spark It onto his Olympus to preserve that spirit and then pick my hand. And then he actually gets Viscerous. So it ends up being a relative positive for him in the sense that he gets Viscerous. The benefit to me is that I don't have to expend for a Poison Tip because uh, I don't have to destroy the Spark It anymore. And now I've got an open field that I get to just hit and he's in a relatively bad spot right like he's in kind of a tricky spot i do make a misplay here though and i will i will call that out my misplay was i should have nexus both spirits from demeter onto equal links instead i choose to actually nexus from equal links onto spine nymph words makes an assumption that i was targeting his face down rune i actually wasn't and i messaged him and i'm like hey actually i don't want your face down i kind of feel bad i know what it is now i actually want the aeolus so i decided to hit the aeolus now i know it was ambrosia face down um but in hindsight I, I was willing to risk what his face down was because i figured it probably wasn't tsunami and even if it was i felt like there was an opportunity to bounce back there but i should have moved from demeter on to equal links i have another demeter in hand and i would have done two more damage than i'm doing right now so instead of doing five i would have done seven right so had I done seven damage, we would have been, you know, a little bit in a, in a little bit stronger positioning, obviously, at this stage of the game. Um, but of course, my opponent then can go for the Ambrosia, which I chose to not take. 
Um, again, I didn't know it was Ambrosia when I was making the choice in my head. Um, I could have like lied and been like, yeah, I want the Ambrosia, but no, I, I, in my head, I was going for the Aeolus. So then he plays Toxion. I'm like, wait a minute, this is going to be a little closer than I thought if he has uh, a little bit of tech here. So Toxion hits the field. I take one damage from that naturally, and then he crashes my Equaling. So that's another reason why the Equaling's play earlier was bad, because had I just Nexus onto the Equaling's, he would have taken two damage there as well, right? Oh no, I'm sorry. He he. Never mind. I take that back because he has the stadium in his advantage. Um, but we're in a pretty good spot. I'm actually just gonna use a spirit from Demeter to cast my earthquake, so it only cost me one from my spirit deck. That's gonna clear his Toxion, and then I'm in a position where I can simply just enchant my Scavenge Gem or Spine Amp or whatever, and then hit him for five here, and we're in good shape and we're gonna win the game. So this just shows how powerful Scavenge Gem can be in an early game setting. I was able to get it out, I think it was turn two or turn three, and search out the tools that I need in Earth to be able to deal some damage. And that could be a stadium, that could be your site, that could be your divine rune, that could be, you know, whatever. It could be viscerous, it could be really anything you want it to be. So a really, really cool kind of search function with Scavage Gem that just gives you so much viability and utility in the game. Like I said, one of my favorite things about card games is actually coming up with decks and strategies like this, and it's such a special treat that I get to do it with my own game. It's really cool. So I hope you guys are enjoying. Let me know what kind of decks you want to see next. And I hope you get a chance to mess around with Scavage Jam when Kickstarter drops in just a few weeks. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.